Scientists and environmental activists have for years called for greater protections for Australia's Great Barrier Reef, but on Friday, the United Nations World Heritage Committee declined to declare the reef in danger. Greenpeace Australia Pacific's chief executive officer, David Ritter, tells the Reuters news agency the move is a mistake. UNESCO's decision was a terrible missed opportunity to uh, shine a light on the grave danger that our Great Barrier Reef is in and to begin the fight back for the reef, which can only start with the Australian government taking decisive action to reduce our contribution to climate change. UNESCO recently recommended the in danger classification, but Australian officials launched an intensive lobbying campaign against it. A UN panel agreed late last week to defer the vote until next year. Ritter says special interests won the day. It is difficult to imagine how much more in danger the reef could be. So very clearly it is vested interest agendas that have triumphed here, not science, not common sense, and not the best interests of the Great Barrier Reef. Australia relies on coal-fired power and per capita is among the world's top carbon emitters. Its conservative government says defending coal is necessary to defend coal jobs. Terry Hughes is the director of the Australian Research Council Centre of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies. Hughes tells Reuters he disagrees with the government's thinking. The Australian government is maintaining that uh, keeping the Barrier Reef off the UNESCO in danger list will protect reef tourism. I don't think that's true. Uh, the real threat to reef tourism is Australia's love affair with fossil fuels. The Australian Environment Minister Susan Lay said in a statement the Great Barrier Reef is, quote, the best managed reef in the world and pointed to the government's $3 billion investment in its protection. But experts worry that won't be enough to safeguard the biodiversity they say is severely imperiled. Scientists say if coral reefs collapse, it could trigger a catastrophic chain of events leaving a quarter of the world's marine life without their habitats. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News.